time a moment ago. We're now joined by Baylor's Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes, with us on 365 Sports. Mac, thank you very much for your time. What were the emotions going through you when Jonathan Chama Chachua came and checked into the game on Saturday? Yeah, pretty emotional. Um, you know, I think like many, he just had to fight back some some emotions, some tears. Um, and I knew it was happening. You know, I knew that uh, he was going to play. Didn't know exactly when. You know, he'd get the call. Knew it'd be. You know, he'd be the first big man off the bench, and you know, it'd be sometime in the first half. But um, it's just a uh, you know, it's an unbelievable story. And and when you know him, um, and you you see the journey. Um, that he's that he's been on, you know, since the injury against Texas a year ago, it's just it's amazing. And um, you know the uh, the ups and downs of the journey. You know, I certainly remember, you know, uh, you know whether it was a few days after the injury that you know finding and hearing that it it just wasn't you know ligament damage. It was it was other uh, you know that that. Um, you know, included the nerve and, uh, you know, now this, this prognosis of, of being out for two years and literally, um, 357 days, you know, later, he's, uh, he's back playing again. And, uh, for all of us that, that know J- JT, um, I think, you know, we would all unanimously say that, you know, there's, there's no other student athlete that, um, that, uh, that, that we would have bet that against in, in terms of making it back that that soon. I mean, he is he is just he's unbelievable, and his uh, and his work ethic is just off the charts. You know, Mac, uh, we, I mentioned this to Jared Newis in the last segment, but, uh, you know, a lot of times when somebody's had an injury like that, their first, you know, foray into the game is, you know, he gets to play a minute here, you know, the first stoppage comes out, okay, that's fine, a minute here, a minute there, you know, maybe four or five total minutes in the game, but not really consecutively, you're just kind of rotating in. But with a guy like John, you can't just go, yeah. all right, you've got about 90 seconds if it goes right, if the ball doesn't go out of bounds you've got to pretty much let him off and and go yeah absolutely and I think it was you know JT's call in terms of just how comfortable he was out there and you know could he go you know for for a little bit you know not not a minute but you know four or five minutes and you know he felt you know he felt great out there and um you know um he he's just you know I, I know we get we get focused on the, the physical abilities, but you know I'm just watching this thing play out, and our huddles are different. Um, you know, during a uh, a break in, in action, right where the clock stops, just um, him gathering the team together, where whether it's right before foul shots or or something else. I mean, it's just the the leadership, um, the command, and the respect that he has on the floor. Um, the individual conversations, side conversations that he has with uh, with some of our players, with with Keontae, with some others, um, he just he brings this this whole added dimension, you know, to our to our team, and um, and then you know certainly you know his his actions speak louder than his words, and the way he he performs and competes, and you know everything is a hundred percent. And, um, you know, our, our players don't know what they don't know. And so, you now all of a, see, all of a sudden you see that in, in your guy, you know, man, I've got to match him. I, I've got to do and play a, a, at least as, as hard as, as what he's playing. So, you know, he just he provides a boost for our team in so many different ways. Mac, the Big 12 meetings last week, and obviously on the agenda, Gonzaga on the agenda or discussion was something – about what's going to happen with Texas and Oklahoma and the possibility of them leaving early. You'd kind of get different perspective that it's dead in the water to Brett Yormark even saying, no, no, it's a constant negotiation. What is your gut feeling on what's going to happen? Yeah, my, my gut is, um, you know, we'll, we'll find a, a sweet spot and um, – and I think that's going to happen, you know, sooner rather than late, later. And, 
you know, sometimes you get to a, a point, place, and time where you have what I would call deal fatigue, and you know, everybody that's involved is just is just tired, right? And they're fed up, and they're frustrated, and and so you you've got to pause maybe for 24, 48 hours, and let let emotions get back in check, and uh, and I think that's you know probably what happened, you know, as um, we got closer to the end of the week, you know, I think everybody's willing, you know, when you think about all the parties involved, the two conferences, Big 12, SEC, the two media partners, Fox and, and ESPN, you know, and then and then you talk about, you know, certainly OU and Texas. And so I think everybody's willing. And uh, my gut says that uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to the right place probably sooner rather than later. And, um, you know, OU and, and Texas will go on with their life a, a year early. And uh, we, the, the Big 12, the, the 12 of us will be able to, to move forward and, um, you know, continue to what I think is, is building, you know, this, this really, really special conference that is going to be as, as good as anybody um, in college athletics and certainly as good as anybody when we think about the Power Five. Man, quick follow-up. You're talking – after 22-20 or 23-24, that, that that, that's your gut feeling that that would be it? Yeah, I, I think, you know, my gut is, again, if you were having to ask me that this upcoming season, this, this 23 football season, 23-24 academic year would be their last. And, um, and then we would, we would move on. And, uh, and so, you know, that means that they would, they would end up you know, leaving a year early, they weren't, wouldn't participate in the 24, 25 academic year. Like, you know, what was originally planned, like, you know, uh, when they were, you know, contracted to, to be a member of the, of the big 12 and, until, um, so, um, again, I, I think my gut says that, uh, we'll get to a, we'll get to a place where, uh, you know, they'll, they'll leave a year early. And I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. I think from, like, outsider's perspectives, I think we probably all hear, like, there's a, a very loud ticking clock on this. Obviously, there is. I mean, you have to get it done by a certain time or there's a point of no return. But uh, that's not necessarily ticking as fast as maybe people in the outside world would say, Mac. Yeah. I mean, somebody told me the other day, and, you know, I didn't, I didn't go and fact check it, but, you know, when Missouri left for, for the SEC, I mean, that was, you know, literally in December, and they were, you know, that following year, um, were participating in the SEC, and so not not an ideal situation, and not something that you know we'd like to, you know, uh, we'd like to do um, because look, we've got four new members, you know, coming in, and we want some clarity of of you know who's in the league and and, and what the league's going to be like and how we brand and, and market it, but. Um, you know, there's not this, you know, huge sense of urgency. Um, you know, I think if if it doesn't get done here in in the, you know, uh, in a in a timely manner here, you know, in the next within the next week, right? Then, you know, then I think it's it's probably a pause for a while, and uh, people just, you know, rethink some things and, and probably need some separation and and not and not really have to talk about it for a little while. Um, so, but um, again, I my gut says we'll we'll get something done. Is there any chance, Mac? And you're one of what twelve ads that are not a part of Texas and Oklahoma, and obviously Brett Yormark and his administration. There there are figures that have been tossed around. You know, exit fees, early ex, whatever it is. I, I know a lot of it can be legally uh, negotiated, whatever. Can you imagine? Is there any chance the Big Twelve would just Say screw it, we need to move on. They're not going to give up this thing, are they? Where they're not going to get a big fat check from both before they leave? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that you know, one, that's a really complicated question, and, and there's certainly precedent out there when um, you know other schools have have left the league early, and you know, um, precedent states and says that you know it's what what those institutions have owed they've really only ended up paying you know 60 percent of of what they really owed because of all the legal ramifications 
et cetera, and whether, you know, you go to mediation and, you know, where, where does it, where does, you know, where does it go to, go to court and what state and, and all of those things. And, you know, what I will tell you is, is if we get this thing done, I think it, it will be fair. It'll be fair to the big 12. It'll be fair to, to everyone involved. Um, you know, I think everybody, um, is going to, and, and will have to give a little bit. Um, but I think we, the big 12 can, can feel good about, you know, where this lands, um, and, and the fact that we can, we can move on. Mac Rose, Baylor's director of athletics with us on 365 sports. You were discussing earlier about Jonathan, Chamochetua, as far as his leadership and what you saw, breaks, whatever, timeouts. As someone that runs a department, how long did it take for you, or when did you start to understand or be able to recognize somebody who's a leader, not because they were the loudest, but because of their actions and what they produced? You know, I, I think if you were, you know, talking about him specifically, I think, you know, we, we knew that. We knew that last year when when we we lost him to the injury, um, you know certainly it was a big blow uh, his physical presence and what he does on the basketball floor. But we also knew it was a big blow to the locker room. It was a big blow, you know, to uh, to not have him practice, you know, every day with the team. You know, these these last two to three weeks, probably him practicing with the team has been, uh, I think instrumental in terms of you know getting getting our guys better um and uh and and better prepared to play um in our in our games and uh and so you know you just you knew it you knew it was such a big loss um and you know it makes it you know even harder um you know with a hole in your heart because he's such a great young man and um he's not a great young man because he's a great basketball player. Um, those, those two are, are completely different things. Uh, he is just a he, – he could be – you know, he couldn't play basketball at all, and, and he would, would be a great person. He is just – he's an unbelievable human being, very, very thoughtful. Um, you know, everything centers around Christ. Um, and uh, he's got such great perspective on, on things. He's got the maturity level to handle all of this um you know there's there's a lot of pressure on him as, as you can imagine you know people wanting him to return um and all with with great intent but you know he's you know being asked you know how many different times is he asked when will you return mm-hmm. you know how are you feeling all of those things and he's just he's he's handled it so so exceptionally well in, in his uh you know, again, a great person, and he's a and he's a great leader. And oh, by the way, he's a pretty good basketball player as well. Yeah, Mac, I I I like to think of him as every. We all need these people in our lives, whatever we're doing. But he's the what's your excuse guy. I mean, just not the way he would say it. The way he like you said, the way he carries himself. Like, oh, I don't want to play this hard, or I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. Well. I mean, he's doing it like I, I don't think I can fake my way through this anymore. I've got to either match his intensity or leave. Like that's that is you can't coach it, you can't teach it. It's just one of those things that happens, right? Yeah, we you know we talk about standards within within the athletic department, and uh, we we've, we've got a standard. It's a high standard, and and we you know we strive each and every day to try to try to meet it. And, you know, some days we, we fall short, and the days that you fall short, you got to figure out why you fall short and and correct, and and uh, you know the next day get up and, and try to meet that standard. And I think with Jonathan, you know, practicing with Jonathan um, on the floor during games, Jonathan in the huddle, he sets a new standard for for our basketball program. Uh, he just does, and now all of a sudden. It makes everybody reach, you know, for this this higher standard than, than what they've been reaching for, and uh, that's the impact that that Jonathan has, in my opinion. And uh, and I I don't think you know I think those people are special. Um, I don't think you know that's that's everyone. I think those are the the, the special leaders out there, and uh, you know that's exactly what he is. He's a he's a a, a really special person, special leader. And, um, you know, he's, he's going to be, 
you know, he's going to be 100% standard, elite standard in everything he does. And, uh, and now, you know, you, you, uh, as a, as a teammate, you see it and you now know and understand what it looks like. And, and hey, I, I want to be like that. I want to match that. Mac, one more thing about the, the Big 12 in the future. Considering where everything was in July of 2021 and how the conference responded, then Bob Bowlesby, and where the conference is now, obviously Texas and Oklahoma bring a hell of a lot to the table and, and, and the impact that they've had. But is the conference, in your opinion, because you've had time for it to marinate, stabilize, others having success, TCU, you, whoever else, uh, and those incoming teams, is the conference in a lot better? Is like a huge difference being able to move forward without them than they would have been a couple of years ago? You know, I, I certainly think so. Let me ask you, right? Um, the two last, you know, national championships in basketball were not Oklahoma and, and Texas um, or Baylor and, and Kansas. The last, you know, four teams to play last two years in the football championship game. You know, it was Baylor and Oklahoma State. It was TCU and Kansas State. Um, and so I think there's a lot to be proud uh, of in, in terms of the Big 12 and the remaining eight. And then I think there's great excitement about the four coming in. And I think they are uh, great uh, value-added, uh, exceptional programs. And so, um, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the Big 12 is standing strong on its, on its own two feet. And, you know, I've said this, you know, about Baylor, Baylor Athletics. Our best days are, are, uh, are still ahead of us and, you know, continue to be remain, you know, uh, fervent in that and, and believe that uh, with all, all my might. And, uh, but I also think that the, the Big 12, our best days are, are ahead of us. And just think about some of the things, you know, the new TV agreement with ESPN and Fox. We're the only Power Five that will be, with both of those broadcast companies, uh, we jumped in front of another Power Five. We started behind and we jumped in front of another Power Five, and, and those two TV partners wanted to get us signed up. Um, they don't do that unless they believe in in the in your membership, the composition of the of the conference, and, and your future. And uh, and so I, I think we're in a really good spot. And. Uh, and again, we know that we've got to continue to work hard and grow and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, find our niche. Uh, but I, I think we're really, really well positioned for the future. Thank you, Mac. We appreciate your time. And, uh, tonight, the women in what is a critical game because of the huge win in Ames. I think there's going to be a pretty large sellout. I've seen others trying to, to get people at the Ferrell Center tonight, which would be a nice win against another top 20 team. And then, obviously, Oklahoma men tomorrow night. The thought of Nikki Collin, and I've been watching more and more of her post games, like afterwards, and you can see her. Can't you kind of see that, that little uh, chip on the shoulder and how it's developing amongst the program and the girls and her players in what they're trying to fight for? Yeah, Nikki's doing a she's doing a great job, and, and you know it's you know it was challenging last year for for different circumstances, and then it's been challenging you know this year when two of your probably top four players haven't been able to play, or one of them has just been able to play just a couple games. Um, you know, you're starting or you're playing a lot. You know, two freshmen, Dariana and Bella, and um, and you're just you're finding a way, and uh, you're, you're getting better each each game and you know that was a big time win as you mentioned on the road uh, in a really uh, great environment at uh, at Iowa State and uh, they have one of the best home court environments in, in all of the country and so you know now an opportunity to to you know uh, to, to play you know a, a great game tonight against number 16 Oklahoma and uh, certainly looking forward to it and uh, just you know, again, proud of Nikki and her staff and, and our and our student athletes. They they have uh, they have really worked hard. They've uh, they've shut out all the outside noise, and uh, they're just they're focused on themselves and they're focused on getting better each and every day. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate your time, Baylor's director of athletics, Mac Rhodes. With us, a quick turnaround here.